Yo, what's up, that? It's your girl Trina, aka yours truly, the baddest chick. And right now, you are locked in with Bad Fuel, home team fam. You know the vibe. Keep the lot. Hey. Heineken, hot new hip hop. That's all everyone sees sounds official, and we got the diamond princess, the baddest bitch, whatever y'all want to call her, Trina in the building. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hi. What's going on with you? I'm great. I'm chilling. Blessed man. Can't complain. Yo, you just celebrated 21 years of being in the industry. You know, you came in as a teenager and you've grown yes. into like a mega mogul. What's the secret to your longevity? Because, you know, women be one and done in this game. Minding my damn business. <laughs> Just staying, man, out of the way, just, you know, just living life. I think, you know, as women, I mean, just as people, everybody, you just, every day we evolve, we got to grow. You constantly learn something. Um, you constantly see something that may help you elevate. And for me, I just try to stay as focused as I can. You know, um, I'm always busy. I have so much to do. So when I have my personal little me time, I try to keep that. You know, good exercise, plenty of water, plenty um vitamins, just stuff to keep you up and just keep me going. And I mean, that's just how I sustain. So tell me about this versus Trina. Whose idea is this? Is this something that you woke up and said that you want to battle Kim? Did Swizz and Timberland contact you? Oh, like no. what's going on? No, um, I actually did an interview, um, and they asked me that. They asked me, um, uh, you know, we hear, how do I feel about verses? And if I was to do a verses, who would I want to do the verses with? And I mm. said, um, I was like, mm. I was like, for me, I would just say Kim or Eve. I love both. I love, I, I just felt like Kim was more like, you know, more provocative, more same level of music as me. I grew up coming to listen to Kim. I love Kim. And I just felt like she has a, you know, mini albums, five albums, I believe. Um, take, I mean, it's just the same kind of vibe to me, you know, and we both kind of came on the same era. I came in after her. So, I mean, I just felt like that would just make sense. If it was me and I was asked to do the verses, I would take him. Yeah, because, you know, when that story came out, the idea came out, Trina, they was dragging you. It was like, she don't got enough hits. How dare she goes against Little Kim? What's her catalog? And I'm like, I got six albums, 10 mixtapes. Are you dumb? Like, let's be very clear. Like, let's be very, very clear. Let's be very, That's my very girl. clear. Let's be very clear. And not, you know, I'm just saying, like, Kim has five albums, a lot of mixtapes like me, um, a lot of features, a whole bunch of stuff. And I just felt like me and her was like the same. Not, not, and not on the same, when it comes like different music or whatever, just on the same, came out the same time, around the same time. Have enough records. You have 20 records to put in the versus battle. I for sure have 20 records to put in the versus battle. Kim for sure have 20 re records to put in the versus okay. battle. So that's just how I felt about it. You know, it was a good thing. It was off from a great place. It was nothing. I mean, not negative on my end. And if, and if they were dragging me, they could drag their ass off. Because one oh, thing about it, I can hold my baby. own and stay in my own. You feel me? It's all good. It's all good. It's, no, it's nothing. Yo, B, ain't nobody gonna drag you nowhere. We already know that. It's all, it's, it's all, it's all just talking all that. So we ain't gotta get on like that. You know, we don't do the controversy. It's all love, especially between me and you, because you're my people. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But, but as far as with the 21st thing, like I actually was down there. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get a chance to actually see you one on one, but I was actually down there to support you and everything. Blah, Thank blah, blah, you. blah, blah. How, how do you feel about how hip hot, hot new hip hop? I'm sorry. How do you feel about how loving hip hop is playing a part in your career right now? Love and hip hop is cool. You know, I control my whole narrative of what I want to do in love and hip hop. The last season, I wasn't feeling it too much, but um, for me, it was mostly about my album. You know, I went through a whole lot with the album, a whole lot just with bad business, bad partnership. And I, that's what the display was. That's what I was showing. That was the platform to show it on. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was dealing with and going through. It's real. You know, I put all my energy, time, effort, money, everything into this album with a partner that didn't do his part or, or failed to do his part. And it, it hurt. It just left me in a bad place. So, you know, I took a whole loss with that. Then it was my mom, you know, losing my mom. Dad was right behind each other. So it was a whole nasty year in place for me. 
So when it comes to Love and Hip Hop, I use that platform to tell that story about that album because it was true. This is how I felt. This is how I, I wanted it. I didn't want people to feel like it was just for the show because this was my real life, real music, real fans that went out and streamed and purchased the album. And this guy just like didn't do his part. And it just, you know, it was an L and I, I felt the way about it. But I'm past it, you know, I'm past it now. I'm moving forward to a new whole vibe. So, you know, but it's a part of the story. It's a, it's a part of the good and the bad that comes with this industry, for sure. No doubt. How you feeling about how women are being represented in the music industry now? You know, because it's, it's a whole lot. You know, you got city girls who, you know, you work closely with. You know, you got Cardi, Nikki, so much. And all of these women you work with, do songs with. Do you feel it's in a okay. really good place? Because they always question if women are writing bars. Does it matter if women write bars or not? Who gives a shit? Who cares? Whatever they want to feel. Who will. Most of the best create, I mean, songs that's created is coming from other people that's helping you out. It could be another guy doing a team. I mean, I give, I have done plenty of records and I'm not the person that created the hook. I do the verses, but somebody else came in with the hook. That was their idea. There's a singer, there's a person that comes up. That's called creating music. That's how you get the best records, you know, and I don't know why people make a big, big deal about it. And those who have the best records have creators that help you in the studio with those records. And if you don't have those creators in the studio, that means you ain't have no great records. It's just simple. Um, but with the women, I, I'm happy to see it. You know, it's been a long time and it's never been this many women. So right now it's women. I mean, whether you're signed, have a deal, no deal, independent, just internet buzz and whatever the case may be, the fire that women are putting into the game is necessary and it's needed. And I just feel like there's a lot of new girls, new talent. You know, you just see all all different kind of styles now. It's so many. It's 500 new girls in the industry. Mm -hmm. so, you know what I'm saying? You just get to see all type of different artists. And I just love it. I mean, we never had that. And just to see a bunch of girls making creative music, whether it's similar. We all have similar stories. We all come from whether it's the streets, it's the hood, the struggle, however. So that comes out through the music, the similarities. She's done all that. I mean, you know, it's a blessing, man. We just blessed. I just feel like these girls, these new girls, they should just be happy and blessed to be in this position because you could be doing a lot of other things and it's not, it's not winning making music. So, you know, it, it's just live your life and let's live it up. What a time to be alive. It's a great time right now. <laughs> Yo, so so little, so just talking a little like, I I don't want to just talk about music, right? How do you stay looking so good two decades later? Cause bitches be washed nowadays. What's your key? <laughs> well, they don't drink enough turmeric, enough ginger, enough mm -hmm. elderberry, enough black sea oil, enough sea moss, enough alkaline water. They not drinking fresh mint tea. Like you just gotta take care of yourself on the inside, cause that's the shit that'll break down. The outside could be looking crazy, whatever, but the inside is more important than the outside. Believe that. And I just feel like, you know, this is like your body is the temple. This is a car, it's a house. If you don't, if you don't water it, it's gonna die. If you don't get a tune up on the car, it's gonna break down. Same thing. So you gotta motivate, take care of yourself. You gotta get some type of exercise in. A little bit of cardio, maybe a crunch or two. A little bit of cardio. Of cardio. Little I'm just saying, I'm not going to fake it and act like, oh, I'm the cardio queen. But I'm just saying, <laughs> you got to get the step in. You got to do it for your health, man. You got to, like, hit that cardio twice a week. Yoga, you know, just balancing meditation, exercise, whatever it is that's going to sustain your mind and you to be in good in a good space. You're not in a good space, your health ain't going to be good. You're not going to look good. Nothing's going to be good. So I just feel like you got to do all that to manifest that. Um, you know, you've been in the public eye for two decades. Your music, your life, television, your relationships have been played out. So you have a wealth of experience. You're on radio. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing what Sweetie's going through right now. Do you have any advice you could give her to as woman to woman that, and the reason why I'm asking, because other women might be going through that privately and you could probably give them some advice that could be like, damn, Trim Bean really held us down. I mean, women go through all kind of stuff and what people go, what happens behind closed doors, sometimes we never get to see that. You know, everybody's human. And sometimes those behind the door scenes aren't pretty ones, you know, mm -hmm. and and you just got to be strong. You got to just believe in yourself, your faith, your morals, your integrity. If you're not in a situation that's healthy or that's helpful for you, remove yourself. It's hard when you fall in love, when you dare, you want to be there. You thinking you're going to miss something, you're missing a person. It's all a part of being normal and going through life. But you don't have to go through something that's not good for you, that's not 
gonna gonna hold you down in a way, gonna present you in a way, or that's gonna have you in nothing that's toxic. You gotta leave. You just gotta leave that. And as bad as it may hurt, as bad as we people may talk about it and say all the negative and the he say she say or the the materialistic. We all have been in situations. We all have been around situations. Whether it's you, your sister, your auntie, your friend, you know your homegirl called you and told you her situation. So people cut it out with the, oh, it can't be. It it could be anybody. It happens. It's happening right now. It's going on in everybody's circle of households. We just don't see that it's happening. Unfortunately, as a celebrity, these things get out in the public eye, off the cameras, and then now the world is judging, speculating, and saying what they got to say. And that doesn't still change what happens behind closed doors. It only changes when you make the change. All right. You got to make the change for that. And that's just, you know, I love Sweetie. I wish her the best, you know, um, and, and for her to just continue to just grow and evolve and focus on her career. She's a beautiful person. You know, she's doing big things. Just stay focusing on her career. Don't get sidetracked and distracted by all of the, the just the drama that's surrounded surrounding you in this space right now because this too will blow over to another space and they'll be talking about somebody else tomorrow. So for you, it's just stay focused, man. Stay around people that's that's going to uplift you in love and light that's genuinely got your back, that's around you, that just want to see you win. And, and that doesn't say, oh, this person's right, this person is wrong. That's just saying to take care of your inner self, be in your own space. You don't got to feed it to the negativity or the, or the clap back to what everybody got to say. Because that just gets it more stirred up. That just makes it more to talk about and, and just get added on to it. Just just take a moment and just focus and, you know, self-love, self-care. Yo, listen, we got this segment, right, on our show that we call it the Money Commandment. So it's a segment that we ask people like yourself who got the bag, right, what do you do to keep the bag coming? So, the, so it's like, what's the money commandment that you live by to keep your money flowing? I'm investing, like constantly investing, constantly. Um, like I'm not okay. Okay, let me say this: investing because I'm a saver, but I don't save to save. I save to invest and to get into other stuff because saving doesn't bring interest. You can save all the money you want, and you're not making nothing from that. That's dead money. You gotta mm-hmm. constantly. Put yourself into like you gotta you gotta reinvent yourself and get into business ventures that's gonna help bring more money in with your investments. It's always about ro- rolling the money over. Always about flipping the bag, making a new bag, making a bigger bag, taking that bag to a bigger, bigger bag. And that's just what I feel. I mean, I feel like you just gotta be smart. You just gotta um, find some stuff that you love. Find some things that's gonna help bring extra money to you. Side money, uh, a whole nother career, a whole nother hobby, a whole nother way. Multiple streams of income. Period. That's it. Speaking of gotcha. speaking of income, because you know there's this um you know ideology going around. I want to get your vibe because you've been making your own money for a long time. Do you believe in splitting bills with a man? <laughs> no, not I, I, Damn. No, I, I'm not married. I'm not married. I feel like if you are married, you should split bills with a man. If you're in college. And you got a college boyfriend and you, that's what you want to do. And y'all both have y'all little job and y'all going to school to get your education. And y'all focusing, yeah. Y'all little jobs, y'all little jobs. Down the rent. You know, you're just making a couple dollars. You're just trying to start your credit. You're trying to get your first car. You're just trying to do your thing. You know, that ain't your career. You're just starting off. But I just feel like that's a difference because, you know, you got your little you got a boyfriend, maybe a high school sweetheart, went into a college vibe, and okay, you guys stand together. Y'all, neither one of you guys have, you know, all the funds to provide for yourself, so you start splitting stuff. Cool. When you get into relationships three, four, five years with a boyfriend, and no, 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 no. Because if that's the case, he needs his own place, you have your own place, and then y'all can figure it out. When you're married, and you have the same bank account, and you have the same last name, then all the bills are coming from one accord. Then we are splitting, spending, it's all family. The wife takes care of the family. It's simple. Mm. So a nigga just need to marry you, then stop playing so you can split the bills. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice and simple. Just be like, yo, marry me, my nigga, and we good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Yeah, she said, absolutely. <laughs> you know the But vibe. yo, listen, I got a question for you, Treen. Treen, I got a question for mm-hmm. you, right? I actually been in the game for a long time, which you know. And I'm, a, and I'm in some movies and shit now. So that's my new shit that I'm doing. I'm okay. interviewing. Movie I'm in star. some movies and shit. Soon come, okay. soon come. You know what I'm saying? Soon come. Mm-hmm. What's your advice for just a, 
a general person just trying to pursue their dreams that's not a typical dream. Because you pursued a dream that you told me when you first started rapping, that wasn't technically your dream, right? No, what would you tell really me as, as, as me being new? Yeah, what should I be doing in this new venture that I'm going, that I, I, I personally got going on that you did when you first started rapping? You mean as a rapper? Or as a as rapper, a yeah, because I'm, 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 I'm on a different course from being a manager to, to being in front of the camera to going to movies, right? You was doing your own thing mm -hmm. and you were thrusted into rapping. I wasn't trying to do movies. Mm -hmm. I just landed this shit, right? So what would got you it, tell me? It. What's the best way I should approach this being that I wasn't coming out for this gig, Acting but I'm classes. falling into it? Acting classes, focus, study the grace, figure out exactly the path you want to take, the type of roles you want to be in. Don't box yourself in. Be gangster, be funny, be comedian, be love, romance. Just do it all. Just go full throttle and give it all you can. Because if you landed in that movie, that was a purpose. That was great. And that was meant for you. Nobody ain't just, that wasn't just by coincidence. Nothing is that. That happened because it was meant to happen. For whatever reason it happened, now you just have to elevate from that. Now it goes as, okay, me. I didn't want to be a rapper. I didn't want to be in music. I love music and probably would have chose entertainment in some field. But because it was, it was thrown at me from trick and because i'm a fan and just love the music once i did my first record i still was not swung to want to do that it was my first performance that i realized that i trina a person that was about to start selling houses to rich people that i thought my dream was put on my suit and get very business savvy and go sell homes I ended up on a song with Trick that was totally opposite of wearing a suit. I ended up being very uh, un, um, unapologetic, very raw, very much myself, and just telling the story that I felt like telling when I realized I performed in front of 3,000 people and all the women were screaming and saying the exact same thing I was saying in this particular record. I knew this is what I chose. So now I have to get serious. Now I'm, I'm on the road and y'all are partying and having a good time. This is a career y'all chose. So I'm going to let y'all party. I'm going to go back in the hotel. I'm going to grab this notepad. I'm going to listen to beats. I'm going to write bars. I'm going to try to learn what I'm trying to do now because this is my new path. Okay. So uh, I had to figure that out. And I figured that out. Yeah. You're immersed in the music game. You haven't missed a step. You know, whether you put out a record or not, you're always active. And, you know, there's always this running theory that music back then was better than it is now. Do you feel like artists have replay value like you used, like y'all had in y'all time? Because that's the running thing now. Artists say they have microwavable music. And I'm like, that's what they were saying about when you and Kim came out. And like, this music ain't gonna last. How do you feel about that? Do you think there's- I mean, that's just, it's people, it's human. People are gonna always say whatever they're gonna say, but you outlast that. Like, I mean, people said I wasn't gonna last after one record with Trick now, mm -hmm. six albums in. So this is 21 years later. So you can't really go off of what people say. They're going to always have something to say. That's the opinion of another human being. I just feel like as an artist, it can be one hit or it can be a hundred hits. It's about how you indulge and how you focus yourself in the business and you manifest that. Nobody can't stop what is meant for you. Like nobody can stop that. You can put out one record. If you don't put out a record, that's the only thing that can stop that. But if you say, I'm going to go in my bag, I'm going to go in this studio, I'm going to go with his, I'm going to merge, I'm going to do a work with other artists, I'm going to become a big celebrity, I'm going to travel the world, then if that's what your mind is telling you to do and you focus to do that, then who's going to stop you? How can't you not do it? Who do you like being better, Trina or Katrina? Both. I'm a mixture of both. Katrina is me every single day. Trina mm -hmm. is me when I'm in entertainment, so that's my alter ego. You feel me? But mm -hmm. I think both, I, I'm both all day, every day. I can be Trina, and I could I could go from Katrina to Trina from zero to a hundred real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, I didn't so. know that. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. My no, yes. I, well, we seen it firsthand. Speak since we seen it because you know you're raw and uncut. You really get to the point. You don't hold no punches. Um, what's your opinion on Kevin Samuels? Because a lot of women feel like he's too rough. And I'm, do you think he's too? And and he before you say delusional. something, Trina. He's oh, delusional. Oh. I want to get on with him though. I got some words to say because I'm gonna I I feel like I can get on his show. Cause I wanna understand like some stuff now, he be correct, but I feel like he's rough around the edge and he will break an insecure woman woman down. I'm not insecure, baby. So you ain't gonna break me down like that. That's Bing. very fact. So wow. I feel like oh. yeah, I, I'm like, yo, I gotta I wanna call up on 
on his show real bad. I, now that's the Trina right there. Me and him. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> so you think he's delusional? Uh-huh. No, I think he. You know what? No, I think you know what. From an aspect of certain things that he say, he comes from certain factual points and things that he say. But you're a guy, bro, and and, and you come down on a woman way too. I get your Trina. Trying to he don't and become. Trying to get, Bean, he don't be coming down on women all, all the time, Bean. He be spitting straight facts that women don't want to hear it. No, 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 no. He definitely spit facts. He definitely said some true facts that a lot of women don't want to hear because women don't want to indulge in the truth about themselves. And it's true. But okay. there's some, he pushed the elevator button some hard on some of these um these interviews, and I'm just like, yo, now that just took a turn for the left. And because she's already broken and confused and don't know how to come back, he got her. So you can't get me like that. So therefore, I just want to chime in. But don't get it twisted. He do have some factual information. And when it comes to women, we are emotional creatures. We go crazy through all our little drama, whatever. And it's some stuff that, yeah, you do be thinking you got second chance. You do be feeling this. You do be feeling that. And that's facts because we're women. And that's just how we feel. But in certain ways that it has to be said for most women to understand. And I, I don't feel like these women is 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 totally under like they are they are. That's who excluded. they are right now though, Bean. That's that's the women that that's who they are right now. So he's just showing you what us men are dealing with with these women right now. I'm just that's saying y'all men, that's because men got to Here you go. Women. Here you go this with the finger women, pointing. Here you go the with the finger women, pointing. You got to be elevated and ready to deal with the type of woman that you think oh, that you want. Man. Because here you go. Y'all men are so jaded because women are now playing the game that y'all been playing for. I love you, Bean. Bean, I love you, though. You ain't got the finger pointing. I love I mean, you, I'm not too, Kevin but I'm Samuel. telling you the truth. Y'all women not are not Samuel. playing the game that you guys have been playing forever. And now oh, women used to be sitting back don't... waiting for a bill or waiting. Now they're like, oh, no, I got two or three jobs, multiple it's man, man, all of my business happen, and I'm not sitting around waiting. So, so I, lo- I love a woman that's doing her. Oh, oh. No, she's back. She's back. Yeah, yeah I, I, like, I don't know what happened. Yo, if you, if you want to have multiple partners, shorty, go right ahead, because then I get to have multiple partners, too. No, but then now you have an open relationship. You, re- you want that? No, yeah, of course. I signed up for that. <laughs> but okay, and that's fine. If that's what you want, then you got to be able to accept the receive. And most men want that, but they don't want to receive that. And that's the issues that, and that's the same. It's fact. It is what it is. Yo, have have you been in one of those type of relationships before? An open relationship? Me. Ah, uh, she gone. Uh-huh. Now she moving. I'm jealous. Back. Hold on. You said, well, I couldn't hear you, Bean, because oh, you no, had I'm here. Sorry. I say no. I say no. I am i haven't been in one because I'm very jealous. You, the baddest bitch, is jealous? Yeah, yeah huh? that's kind of about right. Huh? I mean, I want me. I want my all for me. If you want to do open and whatever you want to do, then go ahead and do your thing. That's fine. I don't have a problem with it, but it's just that it's not going to be with me. Um, Jealous? You? Huh? I'm, yeah, when it comes to my men, like, okay, I'm spoiled, so I'm spoiled. I need all the attention. Like, I don't know, you know, yeah. Okay. Yo, so just being honest, you you need twenty four the- hours, seven days a week, three hundred fifty five. I need it all. Like, I need, yeah. You feel me? I, yeah. I need <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have been in that video holding your man's hand as he's apologizing for cheating like the way Derek Jacks did with his um, wife or girl, right? Hell no. I would have been in that video. I would have been right now with my mug shot but slapping the shit out of him right now. So therefore, no. He you, manipulated you that woman so, made her look crazy. So he's real. delusional. He's a fool. What? You soft. You ain't smacking nobody. You got that woman in that video. You did not let that woman get dressed up. You made her look like she was there cooking and cleaning houses all week while you were out being a fool. And I, no. Absolutely no. He is definitely, yeah, no. See, that kind of man right there, that's the reason. He stop pointing. Yeah. Heineken, stop reason. pushing this girl buttons, Heineken. Yeah, let me, let me, let's see what she's saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that guy is a manipulator. He's the epitome of a habitual liar. Okay, he is a disgrace to that woman. He's a narcissist. He's a disgusted 
pig of a man to women. And the fact that you brought your wife on that uh, interview with you like that, just looking okay. lost and confused, like she wanted, to, she was in a cult, like wanted to get out. No, I don't like that. I felt bad for her. I don't like. That. I wanted to go through that video and oh, cut this ass God. out. But Trina, she got on the camera the looking women. like that all by herself. She did that. Because she she's afraid of him. I know when women are insecure and in fear, she's afraid of him. That's oh. why. Mm. I don't have yeah, no she's more. afraid of him. I don't have no more questions for you, Diamond Princess. I have to go back on set. I think Heineken has. I got one questions. more. And it's no, don't leave because we spoke about this is a real okay. Um, because you know, COVID's been a real thing. We've all been affected. Um, yeah. Are, do you feel like the vaccine might be the right move for all of us? Because right now, you and Esso, y'all travel a lot. A lot of your money yeah. is international, and it looks like they're gonna force this vaccine passport. What do you think? Is this the right move for us? Are you gonna take the vaccine? I mean, if I have to, if I have to take the vaccine passport, I will because I live for traveling. That's how my life is. I'm not gonna be stuck and not do it. I personally don't really. I've never taken a vaccine. I never got a flu shot. I've never had the flu. So hmm. for me, I'm already. Uh, I don't want to take it. You know, my my aunts, my uncles, my family that's older, they all have the vaccine and mm -hmm. they all feel safer. I've been tested for COVID since it started. Thank God I have not caught it. Um, and I constantly get tested bi-weekly just to be safe because I'm out and about now even more than ever in the mm -hmm. airport, just even anywhere. So I'm just thinking, you know, I feel like, I don't know. I'm just not all so for it, honestly. I'm going to just be honest. Um, but if it's forced and I have to, then, hey, I'm not against. You get what I'm saying? Um, I just want to do, I just want to make, I just want this to go away. This is, has been the most horrific, terrible thing that has, uh, it's just been, it's been, not only has people lost, you know, jobs and work and just people and lost life, mm -hmm. just lost, it's, it's like a memory, it's just like, it was a vague moment, like a moment to think of, of being closer to somebody, of the people that you love, of losing people, of not knowing, mm -hmm. it's the biggest uncertainty, the biggest yeah. scariest moment, when most of my friends started saying they caught COVID and they were sick and I was in fifth. It was one of those moments where you just had to be grateful and thankful and you just saw a lot. You could weed out the faith. You you keep what's real and you got to understand how grateful and blessed we are and we just have to take care of ourselves. Like, you know, I went OD with health care yeah. in this whole pandemic just to make sure I kept myself up even more than I have before just because it's a scary place, you know? And, you know, I don't want to take the vaccine, honestly. But if it's, if it's a mandatory factor, I will take yeah. it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's going to keep everybody, me safe, and I'm going to, you know, I'm good. Trina, I mean, even with the COVID thing, and it, it seems like that if people take their vitamins and do what we're doing, you get a chance to flourish because I actually flourished during COVID. I did lose a lot of people. I lost 19 people during COVID. Friends, family, and all that type of thing. But the grind stayed up. So I feel like that if people still keep their grind up, that they can survive this whole massacre and keep their mask on. I think, I think right. Oh, she did. I have to stay. I'm here. Okay, I got you. Can, can you hear me, me now? Yeah, I got you. I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I just said that during COVID, Trina, was a time for me and Heineken came up during COVID. I had time to work on my, 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 my body, my health, you know what I'm saying? Different things that I was actually looking forward to because mm -hmm. I, I planned for the future and, and do constantly. You know what I'm saying? So although that I lost 19 people during COVID, I just kept my head up and said that this could be a chance for me and Heineken to bust moves. And we did. What you think that them okay. girls should have did that you had on your show that was supposed to be your rapper? Because I feel like that the people who you link up with that you want to sign, I feel like that they try to depend on you a little bit more than they should when they need to be out there grinding for themselves. I feel like, as a, especially as a, a new artist, you, you really can't depend on anybody. You got to really understand and focus up in this business and level up and try to figure out outlets and ways and virals and contents and all kind of notions 
to make you flow. You you come, you 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 don't wait on nobody. You 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 work hard, you bust your ass, and when people come along and they help and they push and do what they gotta do, then you understand the business because once you're sitting around waiting, if something don't go your way, then it's a blame game. Now you're mad. You feel like somebody upheld your career or didn't take off. No, you got to Figure it out, focus up, and go after your dream. This got to be your dream whether I'm in your life or not. This got to be the dream that's got to take you to where you want to go. You can't really sit and wait on somebody. I'm not waiting on nobody. I didn't wait on Trick. I didn't wait on Ross. I didn't wait on nobody. I started focusing up. I started making my moves, and they under, they saw that, and they was like, okay, we got to make sure this happens because you can't sit waiting on somebody to start your life. No, you can't. Got you. Um. One thing, um, cause um, you're we seen you with Nikki, and you're close with her, and she been snubbed by the Grammys a couple of times. Do you think she gets the real credit she deserves? I don't feel like no, no, she don't. I don't feel like I get the real credit I deserve. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I never felt like that, but that never held me back or stopped me because the real credit I deserve is me. I am the credit that I deserve, so nothing oh, yeah. can really stop you from being who you are and getting all the accolades or whatever it is you meet, one little award or, or a paper or a certificate or validation from somebody else does not validate and really make you who you are. You know what I'm saying? Nikki has changed. She came into the industry and changed the game. So the credit that she deserves may never be, she may never get that. And that may, that may from a fan's aspect and her fans and people that support her may see that and they may get upset and angry all the time about that. And it is what well, is the biased industry. It's people that's going to feel however they want to feel. But does that take away her greatness? Hell no. Does that take away what she's done in this industry? Hell no. Does that take away how she became an icon and how she came and just made a whole difference in the industry? You can't take that away if you try to. No Grammy or nothing else. You cannot take that away. That's something that was given to her because she put in the work to earn that. So I just feel like, you know, in this industry, you're going to get shorthanded and it's going to be shit that you don't get and you deserve. I'm well-deserved over a lot of stuff that I did not get. I mm -hmm. did not let that stop me. I don't care. It is yeah. what it is. Like, I'm not going to let that be the, the, the determination of Trina being this great person. No, it's not. I feel the same exact way. Yo, so, I'm, no. so, so I'm not going to hold you, Trina, because I know that you got a lot of work. I appreciate you taking your time out to fuck with us. Um, I appreciate you talking to us and all the rest of that type of stuff. 